Welcome back to the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Ben, Jack, and Mike. Yeah, I said it. Gentlemen, how you guys doing today? I ain't said nothing. It'd be better. It'd be better. I ain't said nothing. <laughs> what do you mean you ain't said nothing? I'm about to say a lot, but I ain't said nothing lately. You ain't said nothing lately. At least nothing for on the record, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, gentlemen, I said we might as well jump right into it. Um, what's your assessments of Friday night's performance? Jack? It was, uh, it was kind of disturbing to me. I'm like, okay, this is our chance to get back in the conference race. We're playing a time bluff a team that has to run a conference game in two years. I haven't won a conference game in two years and we lay it is. So and, and we're on national T V. Not not the plus, not the streaming. But we are on national T V. Not C B S. Right, exactly. And this is and this is what we do. Not Hulu. So, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You just turn on not Netflix. TV. You turn on T V and you and we we're there. We're there on national T V. And this is what we do. So, not streaming. Uh huh. Um, that's all I can say right now. Go ahead, Ben. It was so bad that five generations of family members in the backwoods of, of Arkansas called me that night to ask me, "Was I all right?" I was <laughs> like, "Who are you?" Man, I'm your fifth cousin on your daddy's side. I'll say, man, y'all better quit. <laughs> I said, that's a cousin. I said, how were you able to watch the game? Man, we got them antennas on the truck. We watching it live. I said, ain't this some for us? Ooh, sucks. Well, it's no doubt that postseason play is out the picture right now. And and all you can do at this point is uh, play for pride, finish up as strong as you possibly can, um, which does put out in the atmosphere right now. <clears throat> what will it do for home attendance? And right now it seems like the only game which has been on everyone's radar his homecoming, it seemed like that was the only game he was concerned about was the State Fair Classic, the Labor Day Classic and homecoming. Now it's really going to impact who will and will not show up for the remaining home games. So are you trying to say that the athletic director and whoever the powers that be that came over Cowboy Day need to come up with a better thing to attract people? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was called Western Day, but uh, okay. I I don't know if the theme has anything to do with the performance, but it's going to be a challenge to get people back out into the stadiums. That's all I'm saying. No, I was just being funny, you know, since we got themes and stuff. We got, um, to me, the theme was on live TV. uh, It was called Boot Day. You got booted back to Texas. That's what the theme was. But anyway. Okay. Well, let me let me ask you this. I know it's a disappointing loss, but is it, is it remotely possible to give Pine Bluff a little bit of credit? Uh, no. Have we, have a young, they have a young team. No. They have a young team. I put it this way. They have a young team. They have, a, a I think, the, fresh, the quarterback's a freshman, and I believe the running back is a freshman as well. So, uh, they're a young team. They just uh, they did show a little fight. So, but we we were supposed to show more fight. But you know what that sounds like? You said they showed a little fight. <clears throat> it reminds me of uh, talking to my fifth generation cousin, of that little <laughs> Chihuahua dog that won't let the postman come deliver the mail. Because <laughs> the postman he bigger, he got a bag and got mace. But he's too afraid to just go through the gate. Mm. (laughs) 
He says a chihuahua of all the dogs that a mailman would be afraid of, a chihuahua. But well, I, I, no, I, you said I'm just saying you, you you try to give him some credit. Jack is talking about a freshman. We supposed to have you know some other players, and we afraid of a chihuahua. Well, but afraid is a strong word, man. I don't think they were afraid. They just they got outperformed to a degree. They lost. <clears throat> They didn't get out the bus, man. Just like they didn't get out the bus for Texas Southern. Just like they didn't get out the bus for Southern. They didn't get out the bus. I don't know. I if they would say this. Eating I would say this. Chocolate Snickers and chocolate corny dogs from the state fair. I don't know if that's what was going on, but they didn't get out the bus. I will say this, and <clears throat> my observation: um, the Southern game was a game absolutely blown that we, we should have never lost that game. You know, we outplayed and we just lost that game. Pine Bluff and Texas Southern outplayed Prairie from my observation. That's not my observation, but okay. Okay, let's hear it. <clears throat> so again, I'm not necessarily saying who, because I choose not to get into um, the who and the whom. But um, the players, I've been saying it all year long, the players have to be put in better situations. And um, I just, in all the games that we've played, I don't think <clears throat> that the coaches put the players in the right situation. Now, some people might hear me say, Maybe they didn't practice or come up with a play, uh, a game plan. That's what I'm saying. Some might say that we could be a little soft. That's what I'm saying. Whatever you think I'm saying, that's what I'm saying, that the coaches all year long, I don't believe that they put these young men <clears throat> in the right situation. Uh, one of the things I was thinking about before the show came on, can we all agree that Mr. Johnson is playing pretty good? Quarterback, uh, Jalen Johnson. Yes, sir. I, yeah. I would agree with you. Yeah. So there is no way in the Dickens that this kid was the third string quarterback. And hell, I can see that he's the best when you got other coaches, staff members, and they couldn't have seen the same thing. So, well, once me, again, though, hold on. Hit the, pause. Says, hit, the, hit the pause. Hit the pause. And I know where you're trying to go with this, but once again, how these guys are performing off the camera, off script, is totally different than what happens when the lights hit. And he was three for a reason. You went in and brought the other quarterbacks in. But when the opportunity presented itself, he's taken advantage. So isn't it kind of easier to have that, that hindsight 2020 after the fact? Again, from a coaching standpoint, I think it's your job to know doing summer camp, training camp, all season preparations, whatever you want to call it, you supposed to know which one of these guys are the guy. And if you and can't what I'm saying is after all those assessments, that's that's what they're picking on ahead. Well apparently if we so my question again, since <clears throat> if we say that the guy Johnson is holding his home, then something tells me that somebody had to have been smoking some hookah to where whatever this kid is showing now that they couldn't see it then. He say smoking <laughs> There is no well, way in the world, do, man. Do you research this stuff to say or you just come off the top of your head, man? There is no way in the world, <laughs> man. There is no way in the world that this young man can... <laughs> Do what he's doing with the same offensive line, the same wide receiver core, the same running back core, the lack of tight end, and he's doing better than what someone suggested the number one and the number two person was supposed to do. And not only is he doing better, <clears throat> the young man that I chose, he's throwing less interception. So to me, it goes back to what I said. There are some coaching flaws somewhere in the water. I'm not going to throw nobody under the bus. Whatever I'm thinking, I'm going to keep to myself. But there are some coaching flaws to where 
certain guys are able to show what they are about right now, and the coaches missed it. Well, when are you going to put some of the responsibility on the actual students performing? <clears throat> I could easily go there, but you told me a long time ago we're not going to throw any kids under the bus. So I'm no, you're not. You're not throwing kids under the bus. But and you know, and what I'm saying is, you can't just put all of this on the coaching, because if the coaches come up with game plans, the coaches go through their depths of, uh, of available players, and they put who's shown to be the number one or two guy in the practice where it, that's where you can gauge it until you put them in, in lights. And if they clam up under the lights, then you go down to the picking order. But at some point, you're going to have to hold a student athlete accountable for what they're doing. And that's not throwing them under the bus. But if you keep saying the coaches <clears throat> are misassessing, I can't put – that's putting the coaches under the bus, wouldn't it? Well, I didn't say particularly what coach, but um, we can just say this. We could I – I would just go with it this way. This has been a very un- uh, underachieving season. And we can go from top down, from uh, 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 riding on a, on a cowboy horse with cowboy boots, the athletic director – if you want to be direct, to we can go to the head coach. We can go to the new offensive coordinator. There's really only two coaches that I would give a passing grade to as of right now. And, and we can go all the way down to the, to the players. But, again, my thought pattern is <clears throat> from playing baseball and basketball previously, the coach's responsibility is to know exactly what my weaknesses and my strengths are and put me in the right situation. And so I'm saying that I don't believe that that has been the case and let the, you know, whatever happened, happen. But there are only two coaches that I can think of that I could give them a passing grade as of right now. And don't and ask me who. Be. I knew it was well, coming. <clears throat> but um, I'm going to go with, the, I'm gonna go with the easy one. The easy one would be, um, for the most part, I would say whoever the kicking coach is, give them passing grade. Because even in some of his failures, I can't say truly it was his failure. If you know your kid can kick, let's just say, 45 to 47 yards, and you put me in a situation to kick a 50 yard, then I'm, I can't say it's the kicking coach's fault. I would say the defensive line coach. I would have to give him a passing grade because the defensive line um, has been consistent you take Jack out, you put Benjamin in, we're still doing good. You take Benjamin out, you put Prince in, we're still doing good. But from Benjamin's standpoint, from the number one fan standpoint, the defensive line coach and the kicking coach, those are the only two coaches that I can really say I would give a passing grade to. I cannot give a passing grade to an offensive coordinator who don't figure out who to put on the field and who don't put on the field. I can't put the offensive coordinator and say he's a passing grade when you don't even know where the tight end is unless he's drinking water, waving to the camera, saying, hey, Mom, I'm on the team. You know, I dang sure can't put the defensive back coach because on too many occasions, I'm, um, I'm sitting at home sometimes talking about bag up, DB, bag up. And he, I guess, can't hear because I'm like, why are you only five feet, uh, five yards from the um, – from the line or 10 yards at best, and you still getting blown by. So the, de- uh, off, uh, the defensive back coach, I, I know you can't get but one grade, but I would give him three Fs if I had to. Three. Mm-hmm. Weak, strong, and free safety. All of them across the board. F, F, F. Um, but again, I'm trying not to be, I'm trying to be calm, uh, but uh, I feel like Say, man, I paid somebody some money for some knockoff material. I'm, I'm, okay. questioning, the, I'm questioning the scouting. What kind of scouting are we doing this week? You know, what oh, kind of, my goodness. What, oh. Kind, what, kind of film, what, what kind of film are we getting? On these Black and white. Things? Black and white. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. VHS. If they just listened to us, we didn't tell them common sense. Where's the tight end at? They ain't listen. Where's the fullback at just for extra blocking? They ain't listen. 
tell the defensive back to move back 15 yards. They're not listening. So when you talk about scouting, they must be looking at some old broken tape. Because you can't, you can't, you can't make this up. Yeah, we we should know what our opponents' strengths and weaknesses are, uh, especially going into what week six uh, that we're in. Seven, so, eight, whatever it is. Seven, right. Ten. So, yeah. So, who does the scouting, and how is that scouting being presented to the team each week? That's a question for me. Well, Prince said that even if they scouting, that the, the, the player is not listening. So. Uh, yeah, if he don't bring no material in, I guess they ain't got nothing to learn from. So I remember, if I'm, if I remember I'm old. Hold on, just a second. Yeah. I remember old psychology teacher that was at Prezi. He used to tell us write everything that I put on the board, and in his right hand he would write stuff down. No, in his left hand he would write it down. And on the right hand he would be erasing it. And I was like, well, dang man, how am I supposed to study? He said, you better learn how to read faster. And I was like, hmm, interesting. So whatever they teaching them. They must be erasing it as quickly as possible. Now, what were you going to say, sir? Well, yeah, I listen to you guys, and I'm, I'm perplexed, uh, confused, uh, baffled. That bewildered. Bewildered all of those adjectives that you can throw in there, right? Why do you all think that the coaches can't see what we're seeing? <clears throat> Uh, why? Sure they, see what, they see what we see. Uh, no, nah, I don't believe that, Jack. They don't see it. Mm. You don't think they see <laughs> no. it? You're giving them too much credit, Jack. I'm telling you. You give them too much credit. I, I, see, that's what, that's what perplexed me. Not just about you, but fans in general. They, 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 they act like they just walked in blindfolded and they just rolled a dice. All right. Whoever want to go play, go line up. Y- y'all act like they don't put no assessment in here, no thoughts, no schemes, and they just roll them out there and say, good luck. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to change it and say it like this. <clears throat> I'm sure there's some coaching dynamic that goes on, right? Prime example was just yesterday for, um, <laughs> I hate to say it like this, but for all of the Cowboys fans, I don't like the Cowboys anyway. I'm sure that the coaches were telling the players what to do. But when you look at the score, you say somewhere somebody something missing, and I'm saying that same situation. Except for it might not be the score. It's just I'm telling you to go left, and you steady want to go right. Where apparently, if you don't know your left and your right, then you're gonna be sitting on the bench. Uh, maybe I'm gonna put a five pound weight in your left hand and a ten pound one in your right hand, and say now whichever is the strongest, that's right. Whichever is the weakest. That's left. I mean, you know, you have to if you have to come up with just basic situation like that, something. You know, if you were a size thirteen, I tell you to put a size eleven on your left foot and a size fifteen on your right. Whichever one is tight, that's left. Whichever one is big, that's right. I mean, but the concept is I don't think that they're teaching or putting the kids in the right situation. That's all I can say. I keep saying it. I've been saying it all year long. Okay, and, and, and in all fairness, in all fairness, when you look at fairness. social media response from this past <clears throat> week, and everybody ca- calling for heads, and I think that's the furthest thing of necessity at this stage, mm-hmm. and I'll tell you why. Okay. This is year three of year four contract for Coach McDowell, right? Mm-hmm. The first two years, you make it to the championship. Right. <clears throat> okay. You're having a bad year this year. Okay. Obviously, it's a bad year. It's not going the way it was projected. Okay. But now you're asking for his head when you have other coaches on that athletic roster that have not come anywhere remotely close to what Bubba's brought to the table, and they still have job security. So why can't Bubba have job security? So first of all, I'm not. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm not asking for uh, Coach Bubba's head. I think. That um, I'm not saying you were asking, but no, there no, are no. But, I, I'm, but I'm just speaking. Me. Yeah, I'm just speaking. I'm not asking for his head, but what I am asking is something. Uh, people are gonna get tired of me saying this, but I'm asking what you tell me and Jack <clears throat> all the time is stand up. Well, you don't tell us like this, so let me clarify what I'm about to say. 
what uh, you you suggested. Uh, stand up, be a man, you know. And I'm saying at this point, you know, Coach Bubba, you need to start flexing some muscles. You cannot be the head from behind. You cannot be the head from the side. In order for these people to follow you, you got to be the head from the front. And if you see some weaknesses on your staff, like I'm telling you about the triple F, it's time for triple F to go. You know, you can't say you the head, but you know you got a triple F behind you. That's a weight. It's just weighing you down. And that's how people are probably, you know, jumping on the bandwagon saying this and that because they see the triple L, but Coach Bubba's saying, well, you know what, he's a good one. Uh, uh, give him another shot. No, eventually them triple L's are going to get you a shot out of here. Well, here's, okay, but here, I understand what you're saying, man. But when your best is already out there. No, but this goes back to also something Jack says, and I told you <clears throat> ahead of time, and we just, we kind of talked about it. We were talking about from a money standpoint. Um, when you go scouting, if Jack run a four or five, and I'm running a four eight, I can't come up and press Jack because I know I can't keep up. I need to bag my little slow butt up. If me and Jack know you outweigh us, I can't say, Jack, you just gone face Prince by yourself. No, I'm, somebody need to go over there and give him some help. That's scouting. If you know that you got these triple F people back there, we need to figure out what can we do to get somebody that's better than what we got. And I don't know if it's money. I mean, I told you already, when I looked in the portal, I found some guys that was in the U of H, uh, um, TCU, Baylor, Sam Houston, that was, now we don't know how they were by talent, but we know that they were bigger than 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, so, you know, what did, did you try to get someone that was potentially a little taller? He might be slower, but just a little taller than what we have. I don't know. Or are you really truly doing your homework when it comes to looking at these other schools. Again, we look at the Southern game. <clears throat> All week we heard that if you run on Southern, you can win the game. All week we heard this week, if you run on Pine Bluff, you can win the game. And what happened against Southern? If you weren't totally running, we up here passing. What would happen this week? We weren't um, running, we passing. So then even if, um, and I, I said a couple of weeks ago how Jackson State kind of laid the groundwork. I think they had beat uh, Grambling, and then they came back and uh, uh, played Southern or played Southern first, and then Grambling. <clears throat> so when you go and look at those games, are you really paying attention? Or are you talking about, oh, I'm tired. I'm going to smoke a hookah. I mean, I don't know what you're doing, but apparently you ain't paying attention because I came back on the radio and told you, hey, man, this is exactly what was going on with the Grammar game and the Southern game. So either you're not looking at the video or you're too prideful, you don't want to listen to what other people are saying, but that goes back. If the Triple F don't want to listen, Coach Bubba, you need to make some changes. And if you don't okay. make no changes, the Triple F is going to cause you to get out. Let's, let's and, and go ahead, Jack. Go ahead. Yeah, let's backtrack real quick. So in the <clears throat> season, we had some moving pieces, and correct me if I'm wrong, you sound a little muffled right about now, Jack, if you can. You say it. Man, we in mourning. <laughs> <laughs> we just came from a funeral, man. I'm yeah. just trying to keep, keep, keep coming to the funeral. We talking about, hey, how you doing? That ain't what you do after no funeral. Okay, just just to backtrack a little bit. During the off season, we had some moving pieces, so correct me if I'm wrong. We have a, a new offensive coordinator. We, okay. Right? And yeah. uh, any other areas, um, defensive coordinator, how long has the defensive coordinator yeah, been around? Fosselman, Fosselman is still, uh, this is his, uh, yeah, Ron's Bubba's. No, he came to get Yeah. Yeah. So the defensive coordinator has been with us yeah. at least three to four years with um, the defensive coordinator. Okay. He came, he was promoted from D-line to off the defense coordinator. When Bubba okay. Took and special teams coordinator? Um, I can't call the name right at the top. I think it's pretty much been the same. Okay, okay. So, 
Ben, you, you're talking about we're passing too much and not running too much. So we do have a new system that's being implemented this year. That's that's part of the problem um, from, what, from what we can tell. Um, <laughs> do we just give this more time? Uh, because I was, I told Prince a while back that, you know, what what's better out there? Is there anything better out there? You know. You mean coaching? Uh, yeah. You know. Oh, yes, some better out there. Yeah, we ain't got to that yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's some better. No, uh, I don't know. I don't oh, know. yeah, I, I know. I know. I mean, I'll take Bubba over uh, Fred McNair. You know, I don't know if uh, that's, a, that's a, the name that, that Are we transitioning to, to better now? Is that what we're going to do, transition to better? Mm-hmm. I, I just put that out there as far as um, moving pieces that we had during the during the off season. So we have a new co- offensive coordinator. How much of that is the problem that we're having? Weak. You know, again, man, <clears throat> giving you just uh, I try not to give you out too much personal information, but you know, I'm sure I've dated at least before being married two different females at different times. I can't treat female. B, like the girl I treated female A, I have to make some adjustments. And so I think what happens is when you come from other locations and you think the same thing that you did at A is going to happen at B, it ain't going to work out like that. Talent might be different. Schools are going to be different. Terminologies are going to be different. But things are going to be different. You can't do the same thing. But that's just my point. But going back to some newness, I told uh, uh, Mr. Prince, Dr. Prince, again, I'm not wishing for his bubble lead. But if that is the case, I would say that he shouldn't be the only one to leave. Cowboy boot, he needs to leave also. Um, and there should be a whole new structuring, even from an athletic standpoint. I would even just believe to say that prayer of you, the school I love the most, that we should stop even trying to put uh, used tires on our car and just go with something new. I'd rather get a coach up north, Jack, where you from, a winning high school coach, or get a winning high school coach from down south and say, hey, let's just start from the beginning like the Redskins, since I talked bad about the Cowboys. Let's just do like the Redskins. Let's just start from the beginning. Let's just take our lumps and just start from the beginning, believing that this guy from the north, from a winning program, can develop uh, some young people, young men to come and play at Prairie View from the north or from the south and build it from a high school base level and just build up. But either way, there are some other coaches that you can get also that I brought up but, again, I don't want to throw no names away around because I like Coach Bubba. But, Coach Bubba, I need you to, you know, grab your kahunas or something and, you know, trip it up. It's time to go. And so if you don't grab them, somebody else is going to grab them for you and you're going to be out. So I'd rather you grab your own than let somebody else grab them. But... <laughs> Didn't that make sense? Dr. Prince. Yeah, I'm, I'm listening. I'm, go ahead, Jack. I'm waiting for you to no, do your dog. No, no. That's a, I, I told you my... my I got a question I want to ask after that, so continue. Yeah, that's, like I said, my assessment was, you know, we had some moving pieces in the offseason. How much of that moving pieces has affected our season? A lot. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to get Prince's uh, take Why on we, it as well. Hey, man, do you realize... For all the listeners out there, I'll jump aside. It took us a long time to get out of the bottom, to get out of the cellar. And in one season, I just told you, five generations in the backwoods of Arkansas and called me, hi, I don't even know how you knew my name and my number. So you got people now all of a sudden talking about us as if we were you know, 15, 10 years, 15 years ago. So it, it, it's not it's not good. Well, we're talking about one season, guys. 
But it's the way that one season has happened, guys. You let a team like Jack just told you that ain't did nothing. Beat us. You let another team that we were whooping for nine years beat us. You let a team that since we've had the football stadium open, they bragging that they, this is their second home, beat us. There is nothing to be excited about. Those three examples I just gave. Okay, so I want to go back to this portal thing that you were referring to. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm ready. Um, shoot, your, shoot your bully. It, it seems like you are in Auburn on taller people. And whoever, I don't care if they're 6'1", 6'5", 5'9", what you should be looking for are football players. And just because you got height don't necessarily mean that you are a football player. And these guys that are in the portal, these guys that are in the portal, okay, for whatever reason, they're in the portal. They're there, right? Um, They could be a head case. They could be injury prone. They could be looking for money. It could be a whole bunch of different factors that would want that person to be in the portal. And then they have to want to come to you. Regardless if they're in the portal, if they don't think you're their caliber or on their radar, they're not going to come. So you ultimately have to work with what is available to you. And if your F squad is the best squad you have available, that's what you have to work with. Okay, since you threw that out there, you know, so respectfully, um, Mr. Johnson, he came via the portal, correct? Yes. Uh, Mr. Kim came via the portal, correct? Yes. Um, I can't think of the young man number 80 from Central Michigan. He came from the portal, correct? Uh-huh. The young man number 27, if I'm not mistaken, who came from Campbell, came via the portal, correct? Mr. McDowell, uh-huh. Okay. So then my point is to say that there are kids in the portal that are willing to come, but I'm not really, I wasn't caught up on totally the size, but I am saying there are some situations where in some um, positions we are being kind of a little short. You know, it is what it is. Um, linebacker right now, we're, we're a little, you know, right now they got me and Jack playing linebacker. Ain't nowhere in the world, man, we're going to stop you consistently. But I'm just seeing there, so there are people in the portal that would be willing to come. And yes, But not everybody that's in the portal here, Ben. I, you, didn't, you, say, you, I didn't say that. But listen, but Ben, listen. Think, yes, sir. Listen. listen. Yes, sir. That's so much easier said than done. Well, okay. when you lost so many games, it's really easier said than done. So I agree. Okay. But but like I said, man, by the time, if you went through every person that's available in the portal, by the time you didn't back, drown, checked, and in, interviewed, investigated, you, you're going to have to make some decisions. And every decision might not be a home run hit. Some going to be a swing, a swing and a miss. Some going to be foul tips. Some going to be singles and doubles or whatever. But all of it is by chance. But it goes back to what I think Jack said earlier about, you know, um, if I'm not mistaken, no one put words in his mouth. Are we scouting? Are we recruiting? Yes, it's going to take some effort. But it, I guess the question is, is Prairie View worth the effort? I would say yes. Now, if you just, I'm not saying you personally, if you just want to say, because now I will say this, I know for a fact that there are two black schools in Fort Worth right now. And both schools have said, how do I know they said it? Because you like to say, you want me to put you on the record? Because I know both head coaches at both schools, they've said, they ain't got not one person from Prairie View has ever even come there. So if you just want to make it easy and just do the easy recruiting, Hell, ain't no effort in that either. So the point is, if you're going to go out to recruit, then recruit. Ain't nobody asking you to leave Prairie View, stop in, uh, uh, in Waco, and you say you've been recruiting for three weeks, but you only left just from Waco only. Oh, if you're going to recruit, recruit. That's all I'm saying. 
And when it comes to talent, if you say, I'll give you the example, the young man that we said as the defensive line coach, I would believe that he has a philosophy, and for whatever reason, it looks like his philosophy, at least it's been consistent when you look at the different guys that he's got to come in. When you look at the triple F, maybe his philosophy has been consistent also. They've been 5'8", five, 5'9", five, and they've been running a 5'2", five, 5'3", five, 5'5". Five, five. And every time we play against somebody who's running a 4'9", they run it right past us. So all I'm saying is one person's philosophy is a little more consistent and it's working. Somebody else's philosophy, I guess he's saying, hey, you know what, I'm just going to get what I get. And that's exactly what we're getting. But, but see, that's what I'm saying. Then they gotta want to be there. Yeah, okay. man. I can All go. Right. I can go and recruit um, top five players in the state or in the country. But if they don't want to be at Prairie View, they're not coming to Prairie View. I, I hear you saying that, but I just gave some example of guys that's coming. So there's got to be reasons why people want to come. Okay. And maybe we're not tapping the right person. I don't know. You know, maybe we're not. You know, giving money away. I don't know what the answer is. But I would say it's a combination of both. I don't think we're putting people in the right situation. Well, even, even if we had the, the blue chippers, I mean, look at Alabama. They lost to Vanderbilt. You know, Alabama has all the blue chippers that um, you know, starters to bench players, and they, they lose to Vanderbilt. So it, 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 takes, it takes coaching and, and some other things, too. How many games have Alabama lost this year? I'm just saying. You I'm just asking questions. How many games have they lost this year? The one? Okay, okay. How many games have we lost in our conference? <laughs> Three. Okay. And we and chances are, I don't really want to talk about the SEC. I don't see Alabama losing to another doormat type school, but Prairie View, and I'm not saying that they all of that, but we lost to the front doormat and the backyard doormat in our conference. So now, all of a sudden, we must be the garage doormat because we did lost to both of them. Okay. And once again, this is one yeah, season. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> this is one season. One season. Yeah. And so you really just throw the... The, the baby in the bathwater out the window behind one season. First of all, again, for those who are listening, uh, statewide and abroad, I have not said that I would let go of Coach Bubble, but I do think Coach Bubble needs to tighten up his belt. And Triple F, he would be the first person I would really look at trying to figure out, do you really want to be here? Can you tell me some areas that you can do personally to improve? Well, see, and that's if what – give me better players. Give me better players, and I can have a better season. If, if he can't give me the answer that I'm looking for, then mm -hmm. I'm done. It's about the Jimmys and the Joes, Ben. You give me the better players, just like when Deion Sanders came to Jackson uh. State, and he was there, he huffing and puffing now. But it's a fact. When he came in, when he was able to get those FBS guys to step down to FCS – on the interior lines, of course they was going to control the game flow, okay? It's no different. The talent is what's going to make the difference. We agree that Prairie View had better talent than Southern, okay? But they lost to Southern. Did on paper, the last on, paper okay. on paper, Prairie View had better talent than Pine Bluff, and okay. they lost, Okay. Uh -huh. And you can put it on the coaches uh, getting players uh, who are too short, too slow, but they're not out there making tackles. They're not out there throwing passes. It's the student athletics lack of performance. And who do you blame that on? You blame that on the student. You blame that on some of the coaches. The coaching is not all of that pure. Okay? okay. The, what the coach can do is take – the best of your ability and make the most of it. Just like what was that, Big Mamas, Warren Lawrence when he was when the kid was eating Brillo pads and jumping off the countertop. Yeah. He said, "You you you know your son ain't going to Harvard, right?" So it's like 
you, you you got what you got, man. Okay, all right. Well, you're right. I got what I got, and I'm getting what I'm getting, and I ain't happy with what I got. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, look, <laughs> look, we gotta get to our pick, man. We, it's no, a no, what you say, Jack? What you say, Jack? Uh, uh, that email you were talking about a couple of weeks ago. Uh, does that email need to be sent? It no, bro. This it, it's past. Hey, bro. You know, <laughs> you you the IT person. See, when when I said the email, you know, there's a button that you can recall that, right? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Okay. What well, email it went out, but I couldn't recall it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, at this point, we delivering mail since you know the athletic director like to ride on horses. We delivering mail like Mac Dillon. <laughs> Pony, <that>? Pony Express. <laughs> oh Jesus! This dude is something else, man. This dude is. <laughs> he done went to gun smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he said, yeah, he said. The point I'm making, man, is, oh, Lord, you know, I can only just say me. I'm offended, man. I'm just offended. That's all I can say. Um, whenever my fifth generation cousin come a calling, whenever, you know, like I said, we're losing the schools that we shouldn't, I'm offended. It's not that I'm saying that I'm better than other schools, but my expectation was just higher than what I'm getting. It's like me paying friends two thousand dollars for a work job, a job to pay my house, and he only really did five hundred dollars worth of work. I'm offended. I still need my money though. <laughs> yeah, you gonna get something. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you gonna get something. You gonna get something. <laughs> yeah, you know. And so <laughs> then, you know, while you trying to like you trying to joke about it. It goes back to what I'm saying. If you want the, the kids to go all out, I really think the coaches have to be willing to go all out also. And I can only just say that there are only two coaches that I feel like they've given me an all out um, eight hours worth of work. And I told you who those two are. And for those who are listening, I mean what I said. And you can chew on it. You can blow it. It can pop. You can spit it in the trash can. I see what I see. Um, but I also know that, Jack, uh, there are high school coaches in the north and the south that I think they would be willing. And, you know, now me and me, uh, hopefully this is on the record, me and Mr. Prince, mostly Benjamin, I suggested that if they do choose to go that route, um, cowboy boots, don't try to do nobody. Don't come talking about, well, I'm only going to give you high school money. No. If you want the best outcome, give the guy from the north or the south the same type of money that you would give any other, quote, unquote, swag coach. Um, but there are definitely some talented coaches out there. I know that for a fact. This is one of the few years I can truly say that I've been watching high school in the, the north and the south. And if you look at the most competitive teams this year, unlike other years, they've really been playing each other. Like there's a big game coming up right now, <clears throat> a test to see their North Shore. There was a big game just this past weekend, Duncanville and DeSoto. There are some coaches out there that are capable of providing the knowledge and I'm hoping to attract some of the kids to come to prayer. You know, you know they read it however they read it. Uh, another person I said, I think um, he's out there, I'm, and I hate it when I said it because, Lord knows, I can't stand grammar. Um, but Coach Fobbs, he's out there. Um, there is a kid, I mean, a coach. Um, what's his name? Um, I know what you told me, Prince. What's the coach is at Clark right now? What's his name? Um, came from Allen. Yeah, I know, but I'm I, I'm brain freezing right now. Okay, yeah, he's out there, but <clears throat> by no means am I saying you know kick Coach Bubba to the curb. But Coach Bubba, man, you like on um, you know, the ice is so thin, it's cracking. <laughs> 
we can move on to the picks or whatever we want to move on because um, I don't know what else to say. Um, I'm so upset right now. Just like, I could drink and I don't even drink. <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully you can feel better I with an update on our fantasy results of this week and our picks. Well, I'm glad you said that because that's the best I can say. You know, uh, I was about to call it another word. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jack. I think, let me see, Jack, were you in the toilet bowl last week? I was. Yeah, you sure was. Before, yeah. Before New Year. Mm-hmm. Well, hey, I can I can send the records to you. Jack, well, let me just help you out again. Uh, this week, Prince is in the toilet bowl. So, y'all keep going to that same restroom, just alternating who goes in, but <laughs> it's you uh-huh. and him. I'm assuming you're number one again this week. Of course, of course. And, you know, I will tell you this, though. The only reason I think I beat both of y'all this time is because uh, Jackson State um, was on a bye and also FAMU. So I think that's the reason, uh, all joking aside, I think I won. So thank you, God, for that grace again. But I'll take the win with a win. Okay. Uh, And, Jack, how about our picks this week? All right. On our picks. Uh, we both hate <laughs> so the running total uh, I'm in a tie with Brother Prince at uh, any correct picks uh, oh, oh, I, I take that back only 20 correct picks I no, thought no, we had no, 18 no no, yeah, no, 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 here we go uh, my father's I was looking at the wrong page wrong page <laughs> so, <laughs> so Dr. Prince is leading with 25 correct picks Oh, there we go. Yeah, see, there we go. And I'm uh, trolling back to two. I take the 23 correct picks. And Ben is in. Mm. Potty bowl? Potty bowl? Potty bowl, yeah. I can't hear what he's saying, man, if you let him talk. With a running total of. You lame. (laughs) (laughs) Right. What's the number? How How many he got, Jack? Yeah, I didn't hear. He has 19. Correct picks. Yeah. I have, now, now I have a question. Picks. I have a question for you. Prince has uh, 25 correct picks. Now I have a question. Now, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. last week you was close, if not tied. I was coming up maybe too short. Now, we picked almost the same No, no, no. Team. You weren't no maybe too short, brother. You weren't no too short. No, cause I came up because I had two wins that y'all didn't have, so I, I made a, a run. But how is it that he, if we all pick pretty much the same, he didn't jump ahead yeah. of everybody. No, he was ahead last week. Uh-huh. He was ahead last week. I, I went. I went. A one it sounded like you were insinuating that someone's pencil whipping you. No, no. I just asked a question. I mean, you know, just ask. Stay at the I bottom. This, yeah. this week was tough for for all of us because um, yeah. out of five games, um, all of us only got two of the, mm. of the five correct. Well, okay. Friday night threw us all for a loop. <laughs> yes, Texas, exactly. Texas Southern threw us too. And yeah. Uh, Gramlin threw us, and Pete and our mighty PV Panthers threw us. Yeah. So, well, let's go through the picks this week and see if the potty bowl going to stay at the potty bowl. <laughs> <laughs> well, Talking hey. about writing, writing emails. We're going to write an email on your pick. <laughs> well, if that's the case, just know that you, uh, I got there before you, so you have to deal with the remnants after me. So. Okay, that's okay. It's all going to the same place, though. <laughs> yeah. Now, you were saying earlier, sir, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> did you say that um, this is a bye week for us? It is. It is. So it is. at least we can't uh, lose this week. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was about to, um, about to incur was that our Mighty Panthers are on bye this week, and that's something that we uh, – probably just really need is this buy, so hopefully we can uh, use this buy to try to salvage something from this season. But um, as far as you think that we will, uh, do you think we'll hear any any responses from emails this week since it's a bye week? I'm pretty sure you're going to have, see the thing about it, when you get a loss like this and you get a bye week, it can be a curse and a blessing at the same time because you don't have anything to replace that bitter taste in your mouth 
and then it lingers so long to the next game. And then your next game, of course, is going to be homecoming. And you're going to have a lot of eyes and attention on you for the wrong reasons. And if you have a poor performance, I'm telling y'all, man, Texas A&M Commerce is not going to be an easy task. But um, it can make this thing spiral out even further. It can be it can be worse than this. It can get. Oh Lord. <laughs> well, let us go on with the picks available, Jack. All right, all right. So here we go. Our first matchup we have Arkansas Pine Bluff coming off a huge win, getting their first conference win in two years. And they are on the road at Grambling. Wow. Um. <laughs> Grammys at home. Yes, they sure been home a lot lately. Man. Um, I'm I'm gonna take Grambling. I'm gonna take Grambling. Um, it's their third game in a row being at home. Well, whatever. I'm gonna take Grambling. All right. I'm gonna take the black and black and yellow, black and red, whatever they got. Well, both of them are black and yellow, man. Are so you, so you taking pine bluff? No, no, no. I'm taking the G. Okay. Uh, I'm taking the G man as well, even though uh, Pine Bluff is going to be on a high. Uh, all right, our next matchup we have Bethune Cookman at Mississippi Valley State. Lord have mercy. Uh, Cookman. <laughs> Hold on, no, you ain't got to pick. I mean, let me oh. and pick. Let me uh, and pick. Okay, uh, but, uh, <laughs> Hey, man, I'm listening, man. I'm listening. Let me give you some information. Both teams are 0-6. Uh, both teams are 0-2 in conference. So something Where are they playing at? They are playing at Mississippi Valley State. Oh, they got to come to them. Okay. I'm going to go to the uh, – uh-huh. Both teams have – yeah, both teams are searching for their first win. I'm going with uh, BC. Okay. Now, did you hear that? Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go with the uh, Mississippi Valley State Devils. Okay, I might be able to come back on this one. Come on, friends, what you doing? I'm going with Valley as well, man. Okay, I might get a pickup. Might get a pickup. <laughs> Can't be no work. <laughs> All right. Our next matchup, we have uh, Sam U at Jackson State. I'm going um, Jackson State. Ooh, I'm going to take Sam. Right. Uh, Jackson State at home. I made my pick. Let's go. At 2-0 uh, in conference, I'm going to go with JSU as well. All right. In our last matchup for the week, we have... No, no, no. What did Prince say? That's it, Sam U. Okay, all right. Okay, is that, is that good for you? Yes, sir. Yeah, you have a, you have a chance to... Uh, two pickups. Yeah, two pickup games, right. And our last matchup for the week, we have Alcorn State at Southern. <laughs> Alcorn State. I'm taking Alcorn, man. No, I ain't doing okay. Yeah, I'm taking the corn as well. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm yeah. sorry. I thought you said Alabama State. You said corn, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. all corn, all corn. Man, I don't like either one of them either. Uh, both, let's see, all corn is four and three. Uh, Southern is three and three. Uh, all corn is three and zero oh in conference. Southern's two and zero oh in conference. I'm, I'm going to change that. I actually thought you said Alabama State. I'm going to go with uh, <clears throat> Louisiana School. You're going to go with Southern. <laughs> Louisiana School. <laughs> you got them on record now, so we don't want them trying to pencil yeah. with us next week. I said Louisiana School. No, you didn't say. You just said Louisiana School. It's, it's a couple of schools in Louisiana in the conference. No, so, he, said, I, he said Corn and the other school. I said the Louisiana School. I know what I did. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm going with uh, I'm going with Booty. Now I'm going with Booty. Now that make it better for you. Booty. Isn't that his the name? Rap- the rapper. The rapper Booty. Yeah, Booty. 
Okay. Well, yeah, he's from Louisiana, I think. Okay, but okay. you still you still got grammar or southern, but we we know you you can get special at times. You don't want to say yeah, so. Well, yeah, yeah. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah, well, really gentlemen, is. we have we have labored through this one this week, and um, I'm going to start off with you, brother Jack, with some closing thoughts and comments, and then we'll hear from Ben. All right, I close the comments. All right, Panthers. So we have a we have a bye week. Let's get some rest. And at the same time, let's focus in on homecoming. This game is uh, special for alumni. It's special for I mean just just pride, just self pride. So let's go out there and find some pride and one game at a time for the rest of the season. When, don't look too far ahead. Don't look. Don't look backwards. Just look at the game that's in front of you, and realize that home homecoming is so special for everybody. So that's, that's all my final thoughts. Well, I have two final thoughts. <clears throat> um, one, I'm just thankful that uh, God He spared uh, FAMU and BCU and um, any other uh, Florida university from having a bunch of damage. And my closing, closing thought is that commercial. Coach Bubba, I've fallen and I can't get up. That's all I got to say. <laughs> okay, gentlemen. Um, with that being said, the Panthers do have a bye week. Um, a chance to uh, do some adjusting, fine-tuning, soul-searching, go to the altar, whatever it's going to take to get you that mental edge um, to take on a very tough opponent coming up, Texas A&M Commerce, on the 26th. you be able to listen to that game on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Uh, kickoff is at 2 p.m. We will get together for our picks next week. Lord, say the same when the creek don't rise. We do want to thank you guys so much for joining in with us. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter, X, at The Mike Prince Show. Subscribe to the YouTube channel at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. And check out our 24-hour stream on the website at obnradio.com. And be sure to click on the donation button if you want to support and help us continue on with the cause. Our final drumming uh, for the the uh, listening partner month was twelve hundred dollars we still receiving your donation support i even think ben said he was going to do another five hundred dollars jack i'm not real sure if that's what he said but um either way it goes we appreciate you all don't forget check out the website at obnradio.com he didn't say nothing jack i guess it's true he's going to send us another five hundred so, yeah, we, until we the next you. time, I followed it. I can't guys, get up. I want y'all to help me. <laughs> you guys be blessed, and we'll see you on the other side.